Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core, and I've mentioned it before, but I am primarily an iPhone user. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I've been embedded within the Apple ecosystem for like 20 years at this point, and so I don't really think that I'm ever going to be leaving it. However, one of the main sticking points about iPhones and iOS is that they are pretty heavily locked down. And there are ways to sideload emulators, and I've shown that off in videos before, but it is a fairly cumbersome process. Well, over the past couple weeks, we've hit a turning point when it comes to emulation on the iPhone. And that's because recently Apple changed their terms and conditions to now allow emulator apps on their app store. And after getting a couple copycat and underbaked apps, we now have something that's really legit. This is Delta. This app has been around for years, but previously it had to be sideloaded. But now with these new app store changes, you can get it directly from there. And so in this video, we're going to do a full showcase and walkthrough. I'm going to talk about all the different systems you can play on it and also show you how to get them up and running. And while the app is not perfect, it does have a bunch of neat features that make it a joy to play. And it also supports a wide variety of systems, including NES, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Nintendo DS, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. And I think what makes me most excited about having this on my iPhone is that I now have access to all my emulators just at the tap of a button on the phone that I have with me at all times. This means if I just want to sneak in a minute here or there using the touchscreen controls, I can do that, but then also it has full controller support as well. We've got a lot of ground to cover here, so make sure that you grab a snack and drink, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first and foremost, Delta is available on the App Store, so all you have to do is just search for the words Delta Game Emulator and it should pop right up. However, one thing to bear in mind, it's not currently available in the App Store in Europe, and this has to do with the new Digital Markets Act, or DMA. Instead, if you want to use Delta, you'll have to use the new official alt store that's been released in Europe. And this app is not free, it costs a euro 50 a year, and this is to offset Apple's new core technology fee that they've implemented as part of this new Digital Markets Act. And so for Europeans, it's a little bit complicated, and according to the developer, Apple was going to charge them 50 cents per download, even if it was free. And so as a result, the Alt Store Pal seems to be their solution. And so I will leave a link to an article about that in the video description below if you're in Europe and you want to read more about it. But for everybody else, you should be able to go to the App Store and download it like like any other app. Now when you first start it up, it's going to say that there are no games, and that is because you need to load them up yourself, and this is also a pretty easy process. If you tap on the plus icon on the top right, it's going to give you access to your files app. From there, you can access wherever you've stored your ROM library. Say for example, you have them stored locally on your phone, or maybe on Google Drive or iCloud Drive. For me personally, I just made a ROM folder within my iCloud Drive and then uploaded all my games there. And once you have this set up, importing them is super simple. You would just go into one of these folders, then tap on a game, and then on the bottom left, you'll see an option that says select all. Tap on that, and then on the top right, tap on the word open. This will download all of my games from my cloud storage, and then it will import them into Delta. It might take a minute depending on the size of your library, but here you can see all my NES games are showing right up. And the app is going to support all your standard file formats. They have a full wiki page, which I'll leave linked down below. Either way, once the import is done, you should see the games in your library. And from there, it's super simple. You can just tap on the game and it's going to start right up. Now, if you don't have a controller connected, it's just going to show you the on-screen controls, and they're not half bad. They give you haptic feedback. It's probably one of the better touchscreen controls I've ever used. One thing of note, if you're not getting any audio, then I would recommend swiping down from the quick menu and then turning off the silent mode if you have this turned on. I've seen a lot of reports of people saying that the audio doesn't work, and it's probably because of this. Either way, while we have it set up, let's go ahead and turn up the volume and get a listen at how everything sounds. Overall, I think the audio is pretty good. They're just using standard emulator cores that you've probably seen before on other apps like RetroArch. Every once in a while, I would hear an audio crackle and pop here and there, but for the most part, I thought it was pretty solid. Now, while in game, if you tap on the menu button, it'll bring up a quick access menu. We've got a couple different options here. For example, you can choose to save and load a state, and they also have a cheat code option too. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no way to import a cheat database, so you will have to type in your cheat codes manually. And depending on the system, it's going to be supported by like Game Genie, Game Shark, or Action Replay. So it is a bit of a manual process to add these codes. It's kind of old school in that regard. Either way, your other two quick menu options include a fast forward toggle, as well as an option called hold button. And this allows you to set a button to be held down the entire time when you're using touchscreen controls. And there are a couple use cases where this might make a lot of sense. For example, if you're playing a race 
racing game like F-Zero, instead of having to hold onto the gas button, you could just set that as being a hold button. And to set this up, you go into the quick menu, then the hold button section, then tap on whatever button you want to hold. And then once you exit the menu and return to your game, the button is now going to be pressed down. And depending on how you play this game, that might be a good or bad thing. You might want to let off of the gas every once in a while. This is not going to give you that. Here's another example with Super Mario Brothers 3. With these games in particular, it's hard to press down on the run button while also pressing the jump button. And so instead, you could go in and set the run button to be constantly pressed down. It does take a little bit of time to get used to, but I do like the fact that they have this as an available feature. And even though it is pressed down, if you press the B button again, it's still going to do a tail swipe. So it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Now, even though we do have save and load states available in the menu, it also will auto save anytime you close a game. So for example, when we close out of Castlevania and then try to start it back up, it's going to ask whether or not you want to resume your game or restart it from the beginning. And so in addition to in-game saves, you also have this autosave function, which makes it really handy with a mobile platform. Now, one thing of note for both Nintendo and Super Nintendo, they both are playing at an 8 by 7 aspect ratio. As we'll discuss later, there's no way to change the aspect ratio within the app either. I'm sure this will make a lot of people happy, you know, those who like that 8 by 7 aspect ratio, but me, I'm a 4 by 3 guy, and so I wish we did have that choice. Now, once you've imported your library, you might notice that some games have auto-downloaded box art while others do not. And this all has to do with your file name, and I found that with certain systems, like Nintendo for example, it doesn't pull up any box art for some reason. Thankfully, there is a way to change that. Let's use this game as an example. This is a patched version of Final Fantasy 3 or 6, depending on where you're from, and it has a bunch of different bug fixes and things like that, but as expected, it doesn't show the box art. So to change it, you can just long press on the game, and then it'll show an option to change the artwork. And we have a few choices here, but we're going to use the Games Database option. From there, you can search the name of your game, and with any luck, you can find it. Because this game was originally released as Final Fantasy III in the US, that's the name I'm going to use. And sure enough, there it is. So I can tap on the game, and now I can see that lovely box art. And so if you want to make sure that you have the most uniform user interface possible, you may have to go in and clean up some of your games. Thankfully, it's a pretty easy process, and once you've done it one time, you are then good to go. And speaking of that quick menu, let's bring it up again so we can go over all of our options. In addition to changing out the artwork, you can also rename the file. You can also change the controller skin. We'll do that later. On top of that, you can share the game or access your save states directly, but then also you can import or export your save file too. And of course, if you decided you don't want to have this game in your library, you can delete it from there as well. Now, when it comes to pitch perfect emulation, there are a few features that I wish Delta had that it doesn't. For example, when playing an NES game, there are many times when you need to cut off extra pixels on the top or bottom or even left and right. And this all has to do with the old CRT televisions that these games were originally developed for. With Final Fantasy, you can see that there are too many pixels at the top and the bottom, and so it gives you this weird flickering and flashing because those pixels are not meant to be seen. And unfortunately, within the Delta app, there is no way to make any of those adjustments like you could with something like RetroArch. You can find this on other NES games, mostly on the left and right, for example with Mario 3. There's supposed to be about 8 pixels cut off on each side. At the end of the day, it's not a huge deal, but unfortunately, it's just a feature I wish we had within this app. And like I mentioned before, you cannot adjust the aspect ratio, which is kind of a bummer. For example, here I'm playing a patched version of Super Mario 64. This allows you to play the game in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But unfortunately, no matter if I use the 4 by 3 or 16 by 9 aspect ratio within the game, it's going to be locked at a 4 by 3 aspect ratio within the app. And again, it's not the end of the world, but given the fact that many of these games can be played with a widescreen aspect ratio, and you know, iPhones are wider than 4x3, I just think it would be better to be able to take up some of that screen real estate with actual game. From a conceptual standpoint, I really wish it was here within the quick menu, that we could just toggle on the different aspect ratios, or maybe cutting off pixels, things like that. Another feature I really wish we had is the fact that Game Boy does not have any sort of colorization. Again, this is probably something they could implement within the quick menu option, but unfortunately, as it stands right now, when you start up a game, it's just going to be in black and white. And it's definitely something that's possible. For example, there's a user within the Delta Emulator subreddit who a couple years ago figured out how to change out the custom palettes. And so they were able to get a green colorization on their Game Boy games, but they had to rebuild the app. Either way, it's cool to see that it's within the realm of possible if the developer does choose to implement it. Now, as far as game compatibility, I found that everything worked really well. That includes things like Super FX games on the Super Nintendo. And I also tried a bunch of different Pokemon ROM hacks, and every one that I tried worked perfectly fine as well. So provided that you can patch the game into an original ROM file, you should be able to play these games on the Delta emulator app. 
And I found that Pokemon games are a great fit for this device because you can use touchscreen controls for this and it's not really a big deal at all. In addition, they have that fast forward toggle within the quick menu, which can speed things up if you already know what's going to happen within the game or you want to get through a battle pretty quickly. Another thing I noticed is that with slower games like role playing games and Pokemon, you can play these all one handed and it works out pretty well. However, one thing of note, the stock skins seem to be made with right handed gameplay in mind. For me, I'm left-handed, and when trying to hold this naturally, I found that the meat of my hand will sometimes touch that menu button on accident. So I would keep those ergonomics in mind, either which hand you're going to use it, or maybe just using it with both. Now for nearly all of the emulators, it's a super simple setup, no BIOS files or anything else like that. The one exception is going to be Nintendo DS. So let me show you really quickly how to set this up. If you try to start up a game, it's going to say that it's missing the required DS files. If you get this warning, click on the import files button, and then on the bottom you will see there are three DS BIOS files that are required. Now, much like with ROM files, these BIOS files are copyrighted. You can either dump them directly from a Nintendo DS, or a little Google searching will get you on your way. For my part, what I did is I just stored them within the NDS folder in my iCloud drive. So I'm going to access that, and then we're just going to add those files one at a time. The first one is called BIOS7.bin, and the second one is called BIOS9.bin. After that, the third one is called Firmware.bin, and once you've imported those three files, when you go back to the app, you'll now see that there's a home screen option. We'll check that out here in a second. Either way, that's how you get Nintendo DS games working, and I think it looks really good within the app, especially in vertical mode. You can also play the games in horizontal mode, but I just think that the screens are a little bit too small in this setup. Now because we have those BIOS files loaded, we can boot directly into the Nintendo DS app. And it's pretty cool to see this old menu from back in the day. There's not a lot you can actually do here, but it's kind of cool to go into PictoChat and just see what this interface looked like back in 2005. Anyway, once you've imported all of your games, this is what the setup is going to look like. Now obviously I still need to go through and clean up some of this box art, but as you can see it's coming together nicely. So next I want to go into the settings and talk about some of these features that we have available within Delta. And we'll start by talking about controllers. And if you don't have anything connected either physically or via Bluetooth, it's going to default to a touchscreen layout. And I think the touchscreen controls are going to work perfectly fine when you're in a pinch and don't have a controller and you're going to be playing something a little bit slower. However, when trying to play something that's a little bit more controller intensive, like an F-Zero game, it is basically impossible. So my recommendation here is not to try to play some of these action heavy games with the touchscreen controls unless you are a glutton for punishment. Now thankfully setting up controllers is super simple. We'll start with the Backbone 1. This is a telescopic controller with a USB-C port, and so I'm just going to plug it directly into my iPhone 15. Once it's connected, you will see the touchscreen controls go away, and just like that you will now have the ability to control everything with in the game. However, one thing I noticed is that the controls weren't mapped the way that I expected them, and so there is a way to change the mapping, let's do that next. We're going to go back into the main menu, then into the settings, and then under the player 1 controller, and it should already be assigned as whatever controller you've connected it to. From there you can tap on customize controls, and now you can map them for each of the individual systems. Since we are playing a Game Boy game, let's go down to the GBC system so that we can map it here. And setting this up is super simple, you would just tap on the touchscreen button and then the button that you want it to correspond to on the physical controller. Not only that, there are a couple hotkey options, like a quick save and a quick load, as well as fast forward. So depending on the system that you're playing, you can assign them to whatever button makes sense for you, and it's going to remember those mappings the next time you plug in the controller. Now if you plug in a different controller, you may have to remap it depending on how that controller actually works. Now sticking with the topic of telescopic controllers, let's check out my next one. This is the GameSir G8. In fact, this is my favorite telescopic controller right now. This one has big chunky controls and feels a lot like having an Xbox controller slapped onto a phone. It's pretty nice. Now to get this one to work, you have to turn it into the white chicken mode. In order to do that, you have to hold on to select and start for a moment until you see a white light. After that, it should work out perfectly. Again, you'll have to remap the controls if you were using it with something else previously, but yeah, it works out pretty well. I found that in particular, Nintendo 64 seems to play the best because this one has a lot of analog stick centric games, and these analog sticks are great. But I did find it to be a little bit overkill for NES, given the fact that this controller is so wide and that the NES is an 8x7 aspect ratio, it just felt kind of ridiculous. If you're going to be focusing on more retro games, you might want to try out this one instead. This is the GameSir X2S, and I made videos about all these controllers on this channel if you want to check them out. Regardless, this one has a more Nintendo DS style feel, which I think is really fitting for a lot of retro games. Speaking of which, let's talk about Nintendo DS emulation with a controller hooked up. 
And right off the bat, the first thing I noticed with an iPhone is that my little like camera island or whatever they call that on the far right is really prominent within the screen. And unfortunately, like with the other systems, there are no scaling options here. And so there's no way to actually avoid this. But to be honest, after a few minutes of gameplay, I just kind of ignored it and it just sort of faded away and I didn't really see it anymore. Either way, if this is something that would bother you, I think it's something to keep in mind. Now one system I found that needed a lot of button remapping was Nintendo 64. By default this one has the Z button set as the select button for most controllers, and the Z button's a pretty important button, you're probably not going to want to have it there. It'll really depend on the game, but for most of my use cases I prefer to put it at the R2 button instead. And one thing to note with these button mappings, it doesn't seem like they have the L3 and R3 buttons available at all. For example, I wanted to make the R3 button the fast forward button here with Nintendo 64, and unfortunately it just wouldn't register the input at all. Either way, yes, if you're looking to play more action heavy titles or something that relies more on an analog stick input, I would definitely recommend getting a telescopic controller because this is going to improve the system quite a bit. And if you're looking for recommendations, I would say that the Game Sir X2S is probably your best bet. This one is pretty compact and also relatively cheap. It's only 45 bucks. And I think another controller that works well for it is the Backbone One. This one's a little bit more expensive. It usually goes for 90 to $100, but all the same, this is a really comfortable experience as well. Now, in addition to the snap-on telescopic controllers, you can also use Bluetooth controllers and these work perfectly fine as well. For the best experience, I would recommend getting a controller with an X input function. One of my favorites is the 8 Do SN30 Pro. This one kind of looks like a Super Nintendo controller, but has R2 and L2 buttons, and then also two analog sticks as well. So that means that no matter what system you try to play on Delta, you will have plenty of different inputs to work with this controller. And as far as input lag, it felt very snappy, so I didn't have any issues using a Bluetooth controller with the Delta app. Now if you want something smaller, you've got plenty of options. If you want to go to the full extreme, you have the 8BitDo Zero 2. 8BitDo also makes another compact one that kind of looks like a very small switch controller, but I recommend the Zero 2. This one has X input and the other one does not. Now obviously this one lacks analog sticks, so it's not going to work really well with Nintendo 64, but all the other systems that run on Delta are going to be great. It's obviously a little bit cramped, but it's also super small. You can throw it in your pocket or your purse and just kind of pull it out when you want to play a game. Now if you're looking for a good middle ground between portability as well as comfort, then I would recommend this one. It's called the 8 Do Lite. In fact, this is my favorite controller to use when playing platform games. It's D-pad centric, but then also has clicky and precise controls. This one's also super cheap. I think it's like 20 or $25, so I think it's well worth it. I'll leave links to all these controllers in the video description below. One last note is that you can connect multiple Bluetooth controllers to the same phone and then play two-player or even four-player games that way. All you have to do is just make sure you assign the controller to the correct person within the settings and then after after that, it's just going to work out of the box. Now, of course, it's all going to depend on the game that you're playing and whether or not it supports multiplayer, but it is pretty cool to be able to play something like Contra 3 with two controllers at once. So that's about it when it comes to the controller settings. Let's move down and talk about controller skins. And these will allow you to change the look and the feel of your touchscreen controls. If you want to try out new ones, you need to go to this website, delta-skins.github.io. And once you're there, you'll see all these system icons. When you tap on those, you can see a preview of all the different skins you have available. And there are quite a few here, and they are very cool. One of my favorites is that they have an analog pocket skin. And getting these downloaded is super simple. You would tap on the skin, and then tap on the download now button. It's going to ask you to confirm the download. You're going to say, yeah, man, I want to do it. And then go into your download section, and then tap on the skin, and it should get auto-loaded. After that, when we go back into the settings, you can pick that system, and then tap on the skin, and you should now see it as an option. And depending on the skin, they might have it for the vertical or the horizontal version, or they might have both. Either way, that's how you swap out between the different skins. And just like that, we have transformed our iPhone into an analog pocket for free. This means you're going to have the smug satisfaction of being an analog user without having to pay a penny to the company at all. All jokes aside, I would recommend going through all these different skins and finding any that might actually be a good match for you. For example, even though I really like the standard NES skin, there's something about the Famicom one that looks pretty awesome too. And I love the fact that these are so easy to set up. If you've ever tried to use a skin with RetroArch, you know it can be a pain in the butt. However, one thing to note it's not a perfect solution. I found about a quarter of the skins altogether wouldn't actually let me download them. And I assume it's because the skin repository is a little bit older and so maybe some of these links are now broken. Either way,
anyway, that's how skins work, so let's move on. Also within the options, you can adjust the controller opacity, but then also you can change it to whether or not it's going to mute while on silent mode, and you can also adjust the haptic feedback for the buttons and the analog sticks. But really, there are two other big functions that I want to talk about before we move on. The first is called Delta Sync. This is going to sync your games as well as your save data and your cheats between multiple devices with the same account. And setting this up is super easy. You will just turn on the sync and then you can choose between setting it up with Google Drive or Dropbox. And once you've made your choice, you can just sign in to either of those accounts and then link it and you'll be then good to go. There are some app permission requirements, so make sure that you read through it and that you're good with it. But once you have that set up, it's now going to upload all of your games into either Google Drive or Dropbox, as well as your save states and your cheats. And so not only do you have a backup of everything, but then also if you happen to get a new phone, you can just sync it again with that same account and then you'll get all those games and saves without having to transfer anything manually. Okay, and the last settings feature I wanted to show off are what they call home screen shortcuts. And by default, it's going to show you your four most recently played games. So if you just want to jump right back into the game you were playing, that's going to be super handy. However, you can also customize this list and put a specific game if you would like as well. To set that up, you're going to turn off the recently played games and then delete them from the shortcut section. Then below that, you'll have a listing of your entire library. So then you can scroll through and then find a game and then add it to your shortcuts. And once you've found a game that you want to use, just tap on it. It's not going to give you any feedback that it's actually been added, but if you scroll up to the top, you will see it up there. You can also use the search function instead of scrolling through. So say you want to add a Pokemon game, just search for that word. Then you can scroll through all the Pokemon games and choose one. I'm going to pick Pokemon Prism. This is a ROM hack for the Game Boy Color. And that's really about it. You can use up to four games within the shortcuts menu. Now to access these games, all you have to do is find the Delta app on your phone and then long press it. This is going to bring up a sub menu and you will see those games that you selected. From there, you can tap on it and it will start right up. And who knows, I might finally finish Professor Layton at this point. This game has been around for like 18 years and I've only played it for about an hour. Let's try it with the other game. So we're just going to long press again and then tap on Pokemon Prism. And yeah, here it is right here. It even remembered that I wanted to have that nice and clean and pretentious analog pocket skin as well. Okay, and finally, the last thing before we start wrapping up, you might be wondering whether or not you can use this with an iPad. And you can, kind of. When you open it up, you'll see that it's just a phone app, and so you will have to blow it up in order to fill up more of the screen. But even then, it's not going to fill up the whole screen. After all, it was not meant to be used with an iPad in the first place. So this is a severely compromised experience, if you ask me. But if the iPad is the only Apple product that you own and you want to test it out, then sure, absolutely go for it. After all, Delta is free, so no harm there. Now, one thing of note, Delta does have official support for the iPad as well as Sega Genesis, but they are hidden behind a Patreon paywall. And it's always been like that. They call this the early adopter stage. In fact, the Nintendo DS emulator back in the day also used to be within here. Now, this was all set up back in the alt store days when you had to sideload these games and you had to use a license. And I don't see any of that stuff coming as far as functionality with Delta right now. So I'm not really sure what they're going to do about this in the future, whether or not they're going to continue to hide this behind a paywall or maybe implement it into the Delta app itself. I'm not really sure. Either way, it is nice to see that iPad support has at least been developed and I'm hoping that it'll be implemented sometime in the future. And really, that's about it for this video. I wanted to show you all the different features and functions we have within Delta and some of the in and outs and getting it all set up perfectly. In the end, I think this is a great first couple weeks when it comes to emulation on the iPhone, and I hope that we see future options as well. I love the fact that Delta is very pick up and play friendly and has some very clean aesthetics. But as you can imagine with me, I would love to have a little bit more fine tuned control as well. So I'm hoping that something like RetroArch will also be coming in the future. Either way, if you do have an iPhone and you're looking to get into emulation, I think this is now the easiest and most secure way to actually do that. And I think it's especially awesome that we now have these emulator apps officially from the App Store. This is something that we've been waiting for for like 15 plus years at this point. To give you some context, there are almost 150 million iPhone users within the US alone. And the fact that this app is now available to all these users at once is a big win for the retro gaming community. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you an iPhone user? And if so, are you trying out Delta? And what do you think? As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.